Back in the day, a lot of Transformer characters gave Hasbro a hard time because they can't really market their G1 alt modes to a modern toy audience. It just kind of looks ridiculous to have, like, say, a toy microscope on the toy shelves along with jets and race cars and all that. Now these days they just go, eh, let's just do it anyway. But back then it was a problem for a lot of characters. And by microscope, that means one of the characters was, of course, Perceptor. So we're going to take a look at the Reveal the Shield variety of Transformers from between Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon and take a look at what they came up with to actually somehow get the Autobot scientist back in the ranks. So as we can see here, he is an interesting alt mode. That's one of the best credits I can give it. This is a little bit creative. So it's a half-track truck. Tires in front, big caterpillar treads in the rear. This is an interesting little vehicle that they don't produce anymore, but it does give the sense of an all-terrain exploration vehicle. And the floodlights on the top kind of back that up, which does give it this kind of explorer scientist vibe to it. You know, this is something like Lara Croft would be driving, I, I would assume. So it does kind of give you the impression that yeah, this could be like a more serious alt mode for Perceptor. If he had to be a vehicle, it'd be something that could do some scientific research and exploration. So I kind of give them credit. This was something of an inspired choice. See, that said, let's take a look at the detailing here and go through it a little bit. There's not a whole lot going on. You can see uh, door handles and all this across the red plastic, a few vents here and there. But for the most part, the detailing is pretty simple. Like even across the bumper, there's very little going on. You got taillights molded in and painted red, which is nice. And a Mr. 51409. I'm sure that means something. I don't know. My cursory glance of Google didn't turn anything up, but I'm sure that is a reference. That's This is back at the time when little decos like this usually reference something to the Hasbro designers. Well, someone in the comments probably already said it. You got black paint here in the grill as well as translucent yellow for the headlights. The translucent yellow also makes up the windshield, side windows, as well as the lights up here for the floodlights. Now, sometimes that makes sense. Headlights, floodlights. I'm not so sure the windshield works, especially because the side windows and the back windshield are silver painted, which doesn't really match. It, it just... I don't know. It's like it kind of bugs me that like when you have Transformer decos that have windshields that are different shades, but this is just vastly different shades. That's kind of weird and off-putting to me. Also, it looks rather plain. Like because of Reveal the Shield, there isn't even an Autobot sigil anywhere on the toy. It's just a big red truck with tank treads basically. So it's a little bit barren. Like I could use a little bit of, I, I could use the hit of light blue that would bring out some of the perceptor in this toy. A little bit along here around the trim. That's uh, where I'm thinking. I don't know, right now I'm, I, I need a hit of color here. Like I need, it's just like overwhelmingly red. It seems like most of the paint actually went into gunmetal gray on the sides of the treads, which honestly, that's a really nice level of detailing. There's a lot of little gears and wheels and all that in there. But I can't help but notice the gunmetal is such a dark shade. I don't think you'd lose anything by just leaving it unpainted. Like, I'd rather this paint budget go into making the vehicle look a little bit more interesting. But maybe they thought being a, a unique half-track truck made it interesting enough. That's the only thing I can presume. And yeah... It does have quite a little bit of a exposed robot mode kibble under on the underside. So before we get into the actual uh, robot mode, I'll go ahead and show you the Easter egg of the toy. If we flip this piece up, look, he's got a microscope on the top of his roof. That's a uh, could be an interesting detail, or this is just like a detail they needed for the robot mode to actually have the right shoulder cannon look. It might be incidental for whatever reason it is. It's uh, counted as an Easter egg that this makes a little tiny Perceptor microscope on his roof. Just give it to him. Makes the toy more interesting. So here we go. Time for the transformation. And you will excuse me. This is going to be a messy one because I hate transforming this toy. 
So we're going to start by getting the arms out, which is uh, <clears throat> something of a chore. This one's going to uh, this one's going to fall into my category of whatever transformation you can walk away from, because mm, this is a uh, kind of a good example of. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's stuck or not. I don't know this was kind of a good example for me of what the movie toys did to Transformers of a lot of overcomplication in design and I'm sure there's someone out there who says I transform it just fine this thing is this thing is way trickier to transform than it than is absolutely necessary and I'm probably going to run out of things to talk about as I try and get this thing to robot mode it's easier going this way like vehicle to robot this thing was such a pain to actually transform into uh, into robot mode. I almost scrapped the review. Like, I wanted to cover this toy, but at the same time, just ew. You can uh, get this. See, I can't even remember how a lot of this goes, unfortunately. But yeah, this is going to be one of those. Any transformations you can walk away from is a good transformation. So I'm going to fold up the back panels and clip them in. That's going to form the front of the legs. And it's going to reveal everything I need to get uh, to get the feet out, get them into position. That's going to give us the lower legs. If I can now get all of this folded together. Because this has to separate, fold over, and then has to all scoot down on the, on the slide hinge that... There we go. That's how that works. Clip that in. Fold this, rotate this down. And clip this in somewhere, somewhere, anywhere. Mm. I'll probably jump cut before I uh, get this thing to uh, actually talk the transformation. Just to make sure I've got everything in the right spot. But yeah, you can see this thing seems like it's got so much more going on than necessary just to get it into robot mode. And yeah, part of it is because I'm doing the transformation really sloppy. Even with the instructions in front of me, I double-checked the instructions before I uh, even started transforming this toy just to make sure I did some of the parts in the right order. I still could not quite get it just right here. I still could not quite get it the way it wanted me to get it. So that goes that way, that tab in the back pushes up the robot head, should let me, uh, should let me hard connect uh, the torso in somewhere, 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 I'm going to need that jump cut, aren't I? Oh hey, he's in robot mode, how did that happen? Well, I'll give you a quick rundown of how that happened, there's a bunch of little tabs in here, as well as Four separate slides that have to be in the right position in order to get his ta his legs to actually be solid enough to stand on. And then the backpack has a tab that's a little bit iffy and should hold on, but doesn't. So the entire back assembly is being held on by these little clips that are just barely holding on to his main chest. They are very easy to come off because it's just a little hinge. And as soon as they come off, this whole thing can destabilize. So we're going to keep them nice and firm. Yeah, it might just be mine, it might just be mine has a tab that's worn down, but I hate transforming this toy because it's overcomplicated. And that's probably, so it's probably not just the tab being worn down, because it's barely had any reason to be worn at all. So yeah, that's what the robot mode for this toy actually looks like. So yes, it is very perceptor. It has the reds and the blues, a little bit of black here, and hey, they even chromed the chest. Just so you make sure you know it's G1 Perceptor all the way through. So let's take a look at how else they managed to work in Perceptor into this toy. So of course we've got the head design and Hasbro typically goes straight for the toy homages with their designs. They always put the toy first. This is a rare case when, yeah, that is completely the animation model of Perceptor. And it's probably because the heads look nothing alike and everyone remembers him from the show, not the toy. The problem is the expression on this character is so flat and dead. There's just absolutely nothing to him. And Perceptor is an he is the intelligent sort, so a stern face is not necessarily a bad thing. But there 
there really isn't much to this. It's literally just a flat line for his mouth. It, he just looks so bored and uninterested in everything, which is not actually how a scientist would be. It's certainly not how I remember Perceptor. I don't know. It's just, it's lacking so much character. Also, this is a case where the light piping just does not work in the least, as his eyes look completely dead, even when I have these big lights on right now. Granted, they're not behind his head, but hey, I think you should actually be able to see his eyes without a halogen bulb right behind his head. So, form-wise, yes, this is definitely Perceptor. They even included a few details to make sure that microscope mode is not completely forgotten. There is a few strange things to him. The proportions on him are a little bit odd. The upper body is not so bad, but the lower body has some pretty thin legs. The legs are, the thighs are actually much thinner than his arms are, which is a little bit strange. And they lead into these absolutely massive lower legs that seem really out of proportion with the rest of him. It's because most of the rear vehicle ended up stuffed into his leg components. And then of course, he's got this big backpack full of junk from the front half of the vehicle. So really very, very little of the vehicle went into the robot mode and very little of the robot mode is actual components. You know, most of the vehicle is just hanging off of him in sections. And it really does kind of distract because it does create this very busy toy that has a lot of junk hanging off in spots that really don't fit Perceptor very well. The, on the one hand, which is, I don't know if intentional or not, because he is that half-track truck, he does end up with treads stuffed into his legs, which is actually a bit of a throwback to the G1 toy that had a tank mode built in as well. So maybe that's intentional, maybe not. Either way, that's a part of it I actually do enjoy. So looking at the toy, one thing about the vehicle to robot, there is a ton of new detail exposed. So he does have quite a bit of molding going on here, a lot through the legs and a lot through the upper arms as well. You also have some paint detailing, a little bit of silver around the shoulders, as well as some chromed dials, which do have a turn to them because they're just pegged on. But you can actually uh, get the idea of who this character is supposed to be by little details like that, which is quite cool. And then, of course, there is the chest itself, chromed up. So you actually do have that accurate to the G1 toy. And just like the G1 toy, this thing does... Mm, oh, come on. Don't stick on me now. There we go. It does fold down into what is supposed to be an investigation tray. And there's those loose tabs I told you about coming to bear. All right. Hold your place now. Just so we can get through the rest of this review. Since it's the reveal of the shield line, there is his rub symbol, which is... A little bit iffy whether or not it works for me, but that seemed to work pretty well. Obviously, he is an Autobot. So this is supposed to be like a little uh, investigation tray of sorts. Just if he wants to look at something directly below his nose for some reason. Well, it's a little bit of a throwback to the microscope. Speaking of, ra uh, rather than a big microscope lens and uh, hanging off of his shoulder, it's something amiss to a shoulder cannon now. And this is about the one feature the toy has, where you can actually press this out to extend the blaster barrel, and then flip this piece up as a sight, as a sight scope, which is something of a forebearer to his uh, sniper makeover that IDW gave him. Uh, unfortunately, this does not like rotate forward or like flip in front of his face, where this would actually make sense. I'm not entirely sure why he has a scope back here behind his head where he will never be able to see it. But hey, he's a robot. Maybe he can view out of it. I don't know. Uh, either way, that's about as much as this thing has for tricks. One thing coming out of Revenge of the Fallen, toys were so focused on getting an involved transformation into their toys that they really did lack in the gimmicks and the tricks that would normally make it uh, a more interesting toy. This particular figure doesn't even have accessories. So this is pretty much just what you get. So how did the articulation come out, since it's about all we've got at this point? The head does rotate. It's a little bit restricted, but it gets... Um, actually, it's quite a bit restricted. About 45 degrees in both directions total. That's not too great. The ball joint in the shoulder is pretty good. It is completely uh, unrestricted, which is nice. It is attached to that hinge joint that has to hold everything together, though, so easily disengaged 
We have a bicep rotation that uh, works pretty well, an elbow joint that goes beyond 90, that's always nice, as well as a rotation to the wrist. Nothing in the waist, but we do have full ball jointed hips, as well as thighs that rotate all the way around, knees that aren't quite that great, they get enough of a bend but not a whole lot, and then ball joints at the ankles that really don't do a whole lot, you get a slight amount of rocking, but because of the big tread here acting as his back heel, you're not going to get a whole lot of uh, extra balance out of it. So you do get a pretty, you get a pretty articulated toy. Some things are very hindered, and some things uh, not hindered at all. But overall, not a bad job of actually articulate articulating uh, the scientist of the Autobots. So that, my friends, is reveal the shield perceptor. What is a okay looking robot mode aside from how heavy he is in some sections and a definitely unique vehicle mode that I do like it all comes down to that transformation which is way over involved and way over complicated this is where the engineering from the Revenge of the Fallen toy line started drifting into the classics universe style figures and really became a detraction from what they were meant to be this should have been done much more simply, much more efficiently. And while it does create this nice visual transformation, because he does look nothing like his vehicle mode, it also creates a really unpleasant experience playing with the toy. Um, yeah, this was a novel attempt to create a Perceptor. That's the part that just drags it down so much. And it might be a minor point for you, but... As a Transformer, I think the transformation needs to be enjoyable. This one isn't.